Right, for anyone that's not from Scotland, here are some things that are seen as a rude or offensive thing to do if you're welcomed into a Scottish home. And I've learned these the hard way. Number one, fly kicking their grand down a flight of stairs. It's bad manners, apparently. Yo, I can't believe it's 2021 and restaurants still don't allow Slavic people. Just your night. We're gonna celebrate all through the night. Wait. What? For the one light the fire. This chair is too high to make love. Let's go slow. I ain't uh, I ain't, I ain't got nowhere to go. I'm just gonna concentrate on you. Are you sure you won't regret your tattoos when you get older? Like, you just don't put any thought into them. Like you should. Oh, older. Ooh. I barely know her. I'm dying young. You could stop at five or six stores, or just one. Can I ask you kind of a weird question? Hey, I was wondering if you wanted to hang out sometime? Sure, what did you have in mind? You could come over, we could watch a movie. Shh, he doesn't know that I know. Sure, I'm going to rob you. sorry to have to do this. At the end of one of my videos recently, I said that we should Hunger Games all the celebrities and start fresh. Well, ever since I made that joke, I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. So like any well-adjusted 26-year-old woman, I spent the morning making celebrity Hunger Games teams, and now we're going to talk about them. The real Hunger Games is this group of contestants called the Careers. These are rich kids that have been trained for the Hunger Games their whole lives. In our inaugural celebrity Hunger Games, this group would be comprised of Army Hammer, Azalea Banks, Shia LaBeouf, and wild card Cardi B. A trope that doesn't exist in the real Hunger Games, but I think would in the celebrity Hunger Games, is people who are very highly esteemed publicly but succumb to the pressures of the game. This group would be Beyonce, Jay-Z, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Tom Holland. They would reluctantly join forces with the Army Hammer group for survival reasons. Eventually, Leonardo DiCaprio's conscience would get the best of him, Army Hammer would kill him, feed parts of his body to Azalea Banks, and then scatter the rest of his limbs around the arena to serve as a warning to the rest of the celebrities. Moving right along, we have people who would die right away. Unfortunately, this group is comprised of Taylor Swift and the entire cast of Stranger Things. Next up, we have people who survive longer than expected by virtue of stealth alone. 
This group consists of Zoe Kravitz, Adam Driver, and Ben Affleck. Zoe Kravitz and Adam Driver would make it almost all the way to the end. Ben Affleck's body would never be recovered. He might still be out there. Now, people who are entirely self-sufficient because of brute force, but do eventually get taken out, I went back and forth. Ultimately, I settled on Idris Elba and Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy would go hand-to-hand -hand with Shia LaBeouf. He'd have the upper hand for most of it, then Shia LaBeouf would say something really unnerving, like, I love the smell of your fear, and kill him unexpectedly. Next up, we have celebrities who would be righteously opposed to the Hunger Games on principle and meet a tragic and noble end. This, of course, would be Tom Hanks and Laura Dern. I imagine that they would die trying to protect the Stranger Things kid. Finally, we have people who would try to ingratiate themselves with humor but immediately get killed. This would be Adam Sandler and the Queen of Darkness herself, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres would try in all seriousness to get in with the Army Hammer group because she likes them. They would roast her over a spit. I imagine. Now what we've all been waiting for, who is our Jennifer Lawrence? Who wins the celebrity Hunger Games on pretty much luck alone and becomes a begrudging folk hero? You already know. Of course it's him. It's always him. This was really weird. I'm going to go do some chores. Goodbye. While you were sitting around waiting, doing niche, I was making moves. I went to Applebee's before this and got fucking $4 margaritas. What the fuck are you on, Courtney? Wait, will you film up? Will you film this for me so Applebee's will sponsor me? Yeah. And we first like Applebee's. No matter how much you drank last night, no matter how hungover you're feeling right now, or how much work you have to get done, just remember, Saturdays only happen once a week. Have a drink. Or 12. What are you doing? <laughs> this trash can belongs on this side of the street. Where did you get it from? That side of the street. <laughs> okay. What are, um, what are you? Tell me it doesn't look better on this side. It looks great. Thank you. It looks great. You're, you're a saint. You're a oh saint. Oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm tired. That was a lot of work. That was probably a lot of work. That thing's heavy. <laughs> it looks so much better over here though. It does, it does, it definitely does. <laughs> Oh, you're bi? You like to have options? Oh, that's great, that's great. Pick a place to eat. Pick a place. There's 10 restaurants on the road. Pick a place to eat. I'm starving. You want to know who doesn't get enough recognition, right, in this world? Insomniacs. Okay, now before you tell somebody with insomnia, hey, just go to bed earlier. They already tried that big dog, okay? They tried every single suggestion on the board, okay? They tried going to bed earlier. Now they're just in bed early and awake. They tried exercising before bed all day. Now they're just sweaty, awake, and angry. The thing is with some somebody with insomnia, right? They Because of them, we have all the things that we want in life right now, right? 24-hour fast food is because of insomniacs, okay? They, they, they drive that force to get all the good food places to stay open later, okay? All the late-night crazy craving flavors for ice cream because of insomniacs, okay? All the all the Netflix shows that get highly recommended is because insomniacs are been watching them right now and they're recommending it for you, okay? The, all the best art, all the best things are from insomnia because when you have a lack of sleep, things get wicked and you get really artistic. All right, here's my check-in with God. God, how am I doing? I think that is a no. I will smack God's goddessy and walk backwards into hell before I ever let a man call me quirky again. Never again. Fine. If I can't have my shoes, Karen can't have her mom. Hi, I saw you change the seat on my flight. I'd like to get it for free now. Oh, uh, we don't do that. That's not how that works. Shh, she doesn't know I know this hack. You pick up your son every day at 2.45 p.m. in the corner of Ridgemont. 
It'd be really terrible if something happened to him. Oh, oh my god, help me, I got shit. shot. Shit, you need a doctor, man. You are the doctor. Oh, fuck! Hey, I can't fix that. I can't be the only one who hears you. Tears falling down. Give me the bat, Marge. Give me the bat. Give me the bat. Come on. Give me the bat. Give me the bat. Bat, bat. Ha, <laughs> cat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, apparently the Uber Eats guy is coming in a force advanced life support ambulance. What, sir? <laughs> you need to save loud. Questions I ask myself every day. How was I not diagnosed sooner? I was just struck with a memory from middle school art class where we were allowed to bring in our own CDs to play while we worked on projects. And we did like a round robin where everyone got to pick. And every other kid would just bring in a CD of whatever was popular at the time. And I, in keeping with my autism, was like, no, I hate that. I'm gonna bring in something better. Now the first CD I brought in wasn't that bad. It was just all the collective works of Eiffel 65, that weird band that did the song Blue, their one hit. I was like, what about all their other songs? They weren't good, but you should hear them. And the second was a CD I bought from SeaWorld, which was classical music overlaid with whale sounds. <laughs> And I'd pop that bad boy in, and it would be like, doodly doodly do. And I was like, isn't this beautiful? And they were like, no! And I would get so defensive about it. Woo! Oh, man, smoke crack, I know that. Woman's crack. The crack of that ass. Easy. Now you try. First get a jar. Patrick, that's a gun. Yes. Weenie Hut Juniors? Are you saying I belong at Weenie Hut Juniors? Uh, oh no, sorry. I was actually pointing to the place next to it. The Super Duper Weenie World Headquarters. Ladies, you want to send a sexy photo that's really going to get a man's attention? Then don't send a mirror selfie because that's way overplayed. Been there, done that, seen that a million times. Now a panoramic selfie is a different story. A panoramic selfie is going to get a nice up-close view of your entire body so he can see everything that he's working with. You send your man one of these, I guarantee you it's going to get his attention. Cheesecake Factory does not want you to know this hack. Hi, I saw that you charged me for all the food that I ordered tonight. Yes, you have to pay for that. Actually, they don't know I know this. I have a gun in my pocket. So, um, I had a date planned with this guy that I met on Hinge, and I don't know him very well. Literally never met him. We've been talking for like five days. So I agreed to meet him at the restaurant. Um, but he just texted me and he said that he was feeling tired from work and then he was like we should just like stay at my place instead like you should come over later we can like watch a movie okay but I'm gonna rob you then why are you here? You ever look back on your life and realize how horrible you treated yourself? 
I used to work as an overnight paramedic because I didn't have to deal with daytime people, the calls were usually more interesting, and I wouldn't have to do transfers. But here's the thing about working overnights. You have to work during the night. And when we didn't have calls, I would be like, ah, I'll just take a nap in the back of the ambulance. Fun fact about the back of ambulances, that's where people die. I mean, not technically, we don't declare people dead on our way to the hospital, we're trying to, like, save them and stuff, so we say people don't die in the ambulance, they die at the hospital, but, like, <laughs> they definitely die back there. And the back of my ambulance was always very clean, because I made sure to decontaminate after every call. But still, if ghosts are real, that's where they're hanging out, and I would just go back there and be like, let's just throw down a towel, and, uh, <laughs> it's nap time. And then I would be violently woken up by alert tones to go off to some emergency, which is not good for your psyche. Big shock that I struggle to sleep now! Who could have seen this coming? Healthy. I find motivation and supportive posts around the internet to just be the funniest thing ever because they'll be like, you did your very best today and that's all that matters. No, I didn't. I did pretty much my absolute worst. They'll be like, you did all you possibly could. Not really. I didn't even do the very bare minimum. Like, you got the wrong person here. I'm at CVS with my CVX. Can I get a plan B? If the light's too long, we'll try Amazon. Get this baby out of me. If you laugh, you're going to hell. <laughs> Fuck you with all due disrespect. <laughs> Very good.